Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we could call it to order at, my God, 6.30, just when the digital voice said so. Um, tonight, we're going to uh, have, obviously, a uh, COVID update, emergency update. We have uh, annual town meeting motions, which are important. Uh, there's going to be a change, I think, to the warrant we're going to talk about with regard to trust and uh, property transfer. I'm sorry, property funding. Uh, board updates, a little bit of our budget discussion, because the Lord knows it's, it's, uh, it's active out there. That's for sure. And uh, TA updates. Uh, also tonight, we got a housing community, housing choice community app. I think I've just signed that. We'll talk about that. Uh, an appointment to the Cultural Council, and we have to have a building commissioner discussion because the commish uh, moved on to Hadley. So uh, that said, uh, we'll start with uh, COVID state of emergency updates. Hey, EMD, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Things are quiet here, I hope. They're quiet. Um, I was notified of another new case over the weekend, and I passed that information off. So control and um no i didn't pass that on they did to the fire chief and the police chief so they know um i got a call today from mima saying they are changing their distribution hours they are going to drop saturdays which i think in the overall scheme is a good thing it, it's uh just signals things are getting better that's a good thing i'm glad to hear that so with that said a total of eight cases in Sunderland, and we're uh, participating in the state and uh, the regional program just as it's laid out. I'm giving reports to MAC every week. They put mm -hmm. out their little newsletter. I'm not sure where they got the information that Sunderland wasn't participating, but I fill out their little questionnaire every week. It happens that way. Tom, you want to talk about the drive through? What's that, Scott? You want to talk about uh, our regional uh, dispensation plan you, Carolyn, and company have been working on? Well, um, we have, Scott. And, and um, I, I was talking with uh, Jeff the other day. And what we're, what we're looking at is um, we, have, we have partnered with Deerfield, Conway, Whiteley to to do EDS, we, we run through all kinds of different scenarios. And our last couple scenarios have, have we've been doing a, a drive through and our drive throughs seem to work and in, in it appears around the country they're working also. So what we're doing is we're, we're trying to gear up and right now um, we're looking, I've asked um, the fire chief and the police chief to come together with a plan that we can use the um, Sunderland um, Public Safety Building, in particular the, uh, the, the, the fire apparatus space as a drive-through. And some, some would say, well, why don't you just use the, uh, the school? And, and if it was good weather, the school would be a wonderful place, but we can't, unfortunately, Laura, we can't always count on good weather, can we? And and we had we had a um, it was an incident down in one in one of the southern states, I think. Um, but I know it was one of the states that had a uh, um, an EDS where they're doing testing, and basically they had high winds and blew the tents away. And so we're hopefully the uh, the both chiefs are working, and you know it may be something you know, and we are concerned about safety. But it may be as easy as just uh, rerouting traffic off from 47 and sending up Plum Tree and and uh, Old Amos Road right now, so that and just allow cars to come down. So I think, but we're looking at that. So we're looking at putting together an EDS plan um, that would use one of our or a facility either in Sunderland and or Deerfield or Whiteley, but use it as a drive-through. So. And, and, I, and I believe that's probably um, if a vaccine comes out um, that in, or if we look for the flu vaccine next, because don't forget in the, and, and the people that make the vaccines for flu influenza, 
they're they're thinking they're trying to come out on earlier this year to get those flu shots out earlier in case something happens with uh, the COVID-19. So we we may be seeing the flu shots come out a lot, the typical flu shot come out a lot earlier this year. And we would um, we do the drive through EDS sites and that would help uh, do the plans, make up the plans also, fine tune the plans for the COVID. So that's what we're working on that, Scotty. Great, I appreciate that. Chief, any updates you want to weigh in with respect to COVID in the state of emergency? First off, uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, no, we, we're going uh, along as we have the past few weeks. Uh, the officers are taking extra care and caution as they've been responding to calls. We've been lucky enough to get a um, pretty good amount of, uh, of our PPEs from our EMD. And uh, we got a couple of extra things that came in that we had ordered about a month ago. So it finally came in. Uh, but other than that, uh, we're still trucking along, uh, building that EDS site uh, or uh, plan of information for uh, operational plan for the uh, uh, public safety complex. And I think we'll go forward from there. Uh, hopeful that we'll be back to normal soon. Great. Jeff, anything uh, on the administrative side, anything you've heard? Um, just want to make a note that on Friday, the governor issued an order um, asking people to wear masks in public. And uh, I shouldn't say asking, requiring people to wear masks in public right. when they go to the grocery store, the pharmacy, retail stores, or in places where you can't uh, maintain social distancing or six feet apart. Um, and we did put information about that up on the website. That's, we thought that was a fairly significant order um, and it's statewide. And just to note that it, it's actually enforceable. So I think my understanding is that if you're caught in an unsafe position or at a retail store or something without your mask, the, the first interaction will be a warning. Um, then there's potentially uh, civil fines and or criminal penalties. So um, I, I think that, again, it's, it's education. We want people to be safe, but I'm just uh, wanted to explain and make sure people are aware that there was an executive order um, that, that people should wear face coverings when, when out in public as much as possible. Great. Thanks for that. And all this we can find at the mass.gov COVID site. We got our roadside board out there. Again, you can go to our site here at the town office building and there'll be links. If not, go to the MassGov COVID site and there'll be information. And again, pay attention to the information, know where it's coming from because Lord knows there's plenty of it out there that's absolute nonsense. If I- Okay, if, next, yeah, please. Um, I don't know if you want to think about rotating the language on that sign in the center of town, alerting people how to sign up for emergency alerts in Sunderland? Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna send Jeff a note and we can pivot that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I appreciate that suggestion. That's really smart, actually. Thanks. That's why we got it. Okay, anything else, EMD? I think that's a good suggestion. That was it. Okay, so Jeff, uh, you get together and change the language. What the, what the work with Lori on that and and another one you know in about a week have just have a nice day or do good stuff something that doctor that uh, Mr Rogers would say on that sign okay next up uh, if we could talk a little bit about um, well, let's do minutes let's get those out of the way April twenty seven twenty twenty minutes. And at that meeting, very much like this meeting, with a series of updates, talked a little bit about um, annual town meeting and its warrant, TA updates, North Main Street reconstruction, got the green light, and uh, on the mass DOT approved work, and that's about the extent of it. Any questions about the minutes? If not, is there a motion? Motion. The second, Dave? I got a second. 
Okay. A uh, motion is made and second on the minutes of the 27th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Next up. Um, let's, 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 uh, mash, let's push down warrant until we talk about a uh, budget. So let's do budget next. And, uh, I was on uh, Jeff and chief. We're all on a call today, uh, with rep play and uh, earlier this evening, uh, specific questions centered around, um, progress at the state level. Uh, one was that the legislature approved the uh, rules for remote voting. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out for them. Um, there's a question uh, that she asked for input from uh, municipalities. If there's anybody having trouble with the unemployment mechanism, the signing up, the delays, uh, contact our office or contact her office. She did say, if you get a call from DUA, that's the department, of unemployment assurance, if you don't answer the call, you'll drop down the list. So if you see a strange number, it sounds like a really weird thing to say in these times, but if you see a, you know, a strange number, uh, you may want to answer it, in particular if you're waiting for answers on your unemployment application. She also said that originally that office had five zero, 50 people in it, and as of Friday, there were 1,000 people in it focusing on this problem. So I give the state some credit for its um, agility in that. Uh, the governor's task force is up and running. Uh, now, circling back to, and there's some Western Mass reps on that. So Senator Hines is on that, as well as the mayor of East Hampton. Um, now, budgeting. Asked, just a question was asked specifically about the, the current year and the consensus seems to be at Beacon Hill that largely this year uh, the budgets will be held harmless. It's the fourth quarter effectively in the budget cycle and there they're, don't see any particular 9C cuts running down. Uh, however, she's very clear about uh, next year's budget being particularly difficult. And at the state level, the strategy there seems to be to try to work with the feds in particular on uh, education funding, Title I that comes through to make sure that's held harmless going forward. Uh, but no, no forecasts for uh, town uh, chapters, 70s, 90s, other reimbursements. She said not to have, I think the quote was, don't have any hopes up. So uh, that said, uh, Jeff and, and uh, I have spoken over the last couple of weeks about well, what do we do about our revenue forecast? We started our revenue forecast somewhere in the $115,000, $118,000 hole we'd, had to, we'd have to find a way to fill based on the current request expense, expense requests and the revenue projections. Knowing what we know now, uh, which is a whole lot of the unknown, uh, it's pretty clear that we're not going to have the same level of state aid, um, and I think we need to be preparing for that. So uh, that's, that's my opening part of the discussion. Uh, you see a revenue sheet in front of you. I don't know if you can put that up on the screen, Jeff. And those, uh, this was the black sky scenario. 20% reductions in state aid to the town. What does it look like? And that changes our, our, um, that changes our ask uh, to the town uh, from being able to plug in a $117,000 hole to maybe planning for as much as a $700,000 hole. And I understand that that seems dramatic, but that certainly is in keeping with what people who have been on the conference calls for the state level have been saying. And Jeff, I think, were you in on that one? It was between 6 billion and 10 billion. That's what they're talking about. It's current forecasting model for a reduction in revenue at the state. Yeah. Yep. So. Six to ten billion dollars less at the state level. What do we do here in town? How do we plan for it? And I'm going to leave that right in the middle of the table, and we can start talking about it. Before, can I just add one quick thing before we start? Please. A little update. Um, I spoke with the assessor's office, and you'll see. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, yep. But this was the revised estimate, about a five percent reduction. Um, mm -hmm. The assessor's assistant thought that that was unlikely and we, we probably could stick with our original okay. uh, fiscal year one estimate. So 
wanted to start the conversation off with maybe a little bit of good news. If I like your style. Um, so, uh, but that doesn't, <laughs> unfortunately doesn't trickled all the way down. Um, so I, I just did want to mention that um, as a possible. So if we carried over, if I could, Jeff, I'm looking at that sheet. If we carried over, took the 309, plugged it right back in, the 309 would would uh, off at 774, correct? Yes, and I, I already threw it in. Can you still see what I'm, did it, something yep. change? Yep. So yeah, this is, uh, I plugged it back We're in, in the... up here. Okay. okay. You see the bottom number adjust so there's our there's our our current as of as of today if you were to define it as a gap that looks like a gap right there between our budget ask and the projected revenues that being 20 percent, which is which is pretty bleak from the state and hopefully it's better than that but uh, rep play was pretty clear today that next year is going to be quote quite difficult unquote Tom or David, have any comments? Anything you want to weigh in on? Or you want to just take this as a snapshot in time and begin our budget prep looking to find somewhere between reserves and uh, reductions in our ask of, say, 450? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Mr. Chair, I would I would say that everybody needs to go go back to um, you know go back to go back to the budgets. I, I mean, and, and again, you know, when when you look most you look at most places around, they're looking at uh, salaries. Um, so I I don't see how you don't start talking to our our unions that in the schools. Um, and, and start, start, I, I mean, and, and it can't be just us. I mean, we're just one, one part, but I mean, you look at the, uh, um, I, I think that we're fortunate. We've been able to, to keep all of our, keep all of our town employees. They're still what I would call gamefully employed. They're, they're all do, doing work. They, they have, they have the, we're fortunate that they have the option where they have, we have the option to keep them working. A lot of people don't have that. So I, I mean that when you look at the assessor's number and they said you could go to the higher number, well, that, that means that mean people are still getting, you know, tax bills and the tax bills aren't, aren't are, 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 there's no, there's no reduction in taxes. And yet a lot of people are, a lot of people are working uh, or not, excuse me, a lot of people aren't working. So. I mean, we have to do everything in our in our in our power to try to 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 make it through. Maybe not. I mean, this year sounds like it's not going to be as difficult as we thought. But starting next year, you know, July first, we and 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 those are just the hard facts. And those aren't Tom speaking or or the MMA speaking or Scott speaking. But those are numbers coming back from our, our elected representative. And they probably, and she probably has, as a legislator, she probably is sitting in more, more detailed discussions than you or I are sitting in right now. And if, and if that's what the number she's talking about, that's, that should be a concern to all of us. So, so just to be clear, Tom, uh, uh, Rep Play didn't put out any particular numbers. She said that it would be a very difficult year. And with that uh, revenue uh, shortcoming, with the revenue reductions, this is our first pass at what that difficult year could look like. She didn't really have any particular number to work off of. I want to make sure that not characterize it as she said, target this percentage. So Jeff, uh, was the conference call that you were on with um, a week ago, the round table, The economic roundtable? Yes. Uh, I think that was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't this is in keeping with, with those those kinds of moving targets. And I guess moving targets is the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that you know, there was an article in State House News today, um, 
that the the state budget might be revised by it's a the summer so right, um, still right. not sure i'm going to be on a call with the mma and uh the i think director of division of local services of dor tomorrow so okay. if i get any more information um i've also been talking to the town administrators from the other four towns and what what they did is looked at and i haven't had a chance to do this yet for sunderland but looked at what happened during the great recession and the cuts to local aid versus education, um, less to education, more to local aid. But I, I ran the numbers based on what they had said and it sort of evened out to what we had in this spreadsheet. So I didn't um, dig into that too much further. Okay. David, you want to weigh in? Anything you want to say? Uh, no, I'm just waiting to see what the numbers end up coming out like. I think it's we're all kind of in that waiting position, really. Um, it's unfortunate. So can can we can we collectively come to some uh, guidance? We've sent out a correspondence a week ago to the schools, uh, the education side, the Frontier, Franklin Tech, and, and Union Thirty Eight, um, and. Jeff, you've been working with department heads specific to resubmit their, resubmit their requests. Should we have a timeline on that that allows us, hey, Wendy's iPhone, should uh, we have a timeline on there to have that information back to us so we can start seeing where uh, reductions in the requests are landing? I, I will note that we did we have gotten um almost all the departments back okay. up to the um town administrator select board budget but um we were we did come in you know over seventy thousand dollars less in requests so far um, okay. so i i think it if i can offer an opinion I, I think it's really hard to tell without knowing what the schools are going to do how how to look at the rest of the municipal budget because that is such a large part of it. Um, School committee, what do you guys think? Hey, hey Scott. That kind of gets, oh. Hey, Scott. Go ahead. Um, Hi, Peter. You know, I think obviously, I mean, Darius was in last week and talking about this and, yep. um, you know, the problem obviously is it's, you'd like to have a firm target to, to shoot at if you're going to have to come up with a, a bunch of lower numbers, but it seems like a firm target is something that's going to be hard to find these days. Um, and, you know, it's sort of, it's a little bit like, I think nobody wants to go first. Um, but it's, fair. it's, you know, it's because that when you start talking about this stuff, you're talking about real people and real jobs that are, you know, going to be on the line and you, you just need to tread carefully. Um, you know, we had an answer. I know if there was an easy answer to this, we already would have been doing it. So, um, you know, obviously the elementary school at some point, you know, if, if, if the, if the, order in effect is okay you've got to cut this amount then you know we're members of the town and that's going to happen but i'm not sure how you're just going to be dealing with the regional schools that's always an issue because you don't have control over the situation mm -hmm. so again I, I the one thing that would help me it's if we could you know a lot of this stuff now if, if i was coming to regular meetings at town hall there'd be the handouts on the budget stuff that that jeff has put together and and, and other financial stuff and you know I pick up a copy and feel like I knew what was going on here it's a little bit like you know this is it's all a bit of a mystery even sort of you know what the current numbers are and how we stand and what goes into them and so on and um, you know we need to figure out a way to, to make that stuff more available because that would certainly help. Uh, uh, Peter do you have the, the, the big spreadsheet for the annual town meeting as well as the revenue sheet i've got nothing myself i just see what jeff is sharing with us at this time jeff could you make sure that, that peter gets that yep thanks so much 
Yeah. Um, as, as well as as well as the recap. Yeah. But you know, I it, I mean, I, and I, I also, Jeff, if we could get like, I'm not sure what you sent out in the letter that you signed at last week's meeting about, you know, what what they need. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, if, again, I think, I, I think there's going to be very much like, yeah, okay, we're on board with what needs to be done, but we're not going to be the first ones to jump. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that's fair because, again, people's jobs are at stake. Okay, Peter, I appreciate yeah. that. I, I wish, the other thing I wish, you know, they were supposed to be looked down in Washington and they put together three stimulus packages and the one thing they've left out of all of them was, you know, aid to uh, state and local governments. And right. the numbers they're talking about is big, but who knows whether they're actually gonna get the, you know, get it done. Um, and who knows if they do get it done, when they get it done. And so is that something that's gonna be done in, you know, two, three weeks, or is that something they're going to sit on for a couple of months? And, you know, by that point, we've already got to be doing something. That's right. Good point, Peter. And that, I mean, that could be a big number. You know, I mean, Christ, the numbers that's going around with everything else is huge. And, and uh, you know, if, uh, if Massachusetts share of something suddenly came out to be an extra billion or two, you know, that, that, that makes a big difference. Right, right. But there's no way of knowing right now. And so the question is, you know, how long can you put it off? How fast can you act when you have to act? Um, and I don't know. I just remember from a long time ago, there was something uh, with the school, some requirement that if you were going to do any layoffs, you had to notify people by a certain date in May or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but, you know, whether there are concerns about just procedures that have to be followed, something we ought to be, be aware of. Great, Peter. I appreciate that. So right now we've got our expense. And again, we'll send this off. It looks like as of two days, 430-2020, you have a $400 plus thousand dollar increase in expenses, 417-337. And even if we use last year's I'm sorry. Yeah, even if you use last year's numbers, we would be in, you know, 117, a kind of a hole. Um, if we take and plan on state reductions, that 117 just continues to slide south. Mm -hmm. That's that's the mechanism we're up against. And we got to the 117 because I thought things were sort of in balance. And so the 117 was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, Jeff, you want to talk a little bit about that? Was that driven primarily by the revenue or is that the last set of expense budgets being added to it? Um, that, that was the, the requests that, that came in and, and all of the assessments that the town had received. You're talking about this 117. Yeah. The original gap. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, I think that, that there was um, a certain amount of uh salary increases for for non-union staff that was included in that um and you know just i think uh growth and and expenses um and that was putting us at what four percent uh f currently for, it's four point uh, nine for, from last year yeah currently it looks like it's yeah, four point it was, nine Four, yeah, four point. Okay. Yeah. So, Peter, when you've got the when you've got the the detailed budget spreadsheet in front of you, you fire off any questions to any of us. Okay. So, I mean, I still, I, I still don't. You know, I, I, I'm not sitting here with an answer to this thing, and I'm sitting here thinking, mm -hmm. um, you know, if I look at the numbers that were presented to you as part of our initial, you know, recommended budget. Mm -hmm. uh in you know when the world was different uh the 4.9 percent increase that was uh probably uh on the order of uh, three percent of that was just at this point uh contracted uh wage salary increases mm -hmm. uh there was one new position for the 
uh, team leader dealing with the SPED requirements that was uh, in the number of 55,000. And there were a few very small items dealing with expenses. But, um, you know, now if you were to tell, you know, if the word was, you know, cut a, you know that was, if I remember correctly, about 150,000 increase. And if you were to say, well, cut 150,000 out of that, um, you say, well, you know, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, well, you take out the team leader and then somehow you got to come up with another 90,000. Um, right. But as Darius pointed out, when you, if you have to take 150 out of it um, and you got contracts, so you can't just say, okay, no raises this year, even though, I mean, I'm sure you could talk to the unions, but I'm not sure that they'd be willing to give on that. Obviously you ought to probably talk to them. Um, it may be that, you know, how you, how you restructure, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but I know they've been thinking about it and I know they realize it's very likely going to have to be done. Um, but then when you toss out a re it's what we've said is you toss out a restructure program that involves, you know, maybe a small number of layoffs, but it's still more than zero. Um, you got to be careful about how that affects you know, your operation in the, you know, in the current time, because if it turns out that something different is necessary, well, now, you know, you've sent a message about the people that you were about to lay, you were willing to lay off. And mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. But realizing it's, you know, at some point you got to be making decisions here. Right. Well, right. I think to, to Tom's point earlier, I think we got to start looking at, you know, discussing with the unions, perhaps, you know, like putting, you know, no, on the option of no colas. Yeah. I mean, I think that's then, worth, that's worth uh, you know, you can always get a flat no. No, right, but, but at least then we've given them the option, and then then by saying no, then they're gonna they've basically sort of accepted. Well, okay, that means if we have to cut, then your only other choice then is layoffs at that point, because when you look at where the budget is, it's mostly staff. Yeah, I mean, I again, I'm not involved in, I haven't been involved in union negotiations. I don't know the parties, so on. But it's just that there's been a serious effort. Uh, throughout this, you know, recent past year on all sides to um, at least for the balance of uh, FY20 to save everybody's jobs. And that's true on the school side and it's true on the town side. And, uh, you know, that was because that seemed like that was the, the, the right thing to do. I mean, partly you're also trying to, you got to continue the education process and in the town, you got to continue operating the town, but it was also like, you know, that's what you want to do now. And I think that generated a, should have generated a fair bit of goodwill all around in the sense of, yeah, we're all in this together. Now, when we look at the FY21 budget, you know, perhaps there will be, you know, some willingness to talk about what we can do um, for FY21 on a one-time basis, just to help deal with this problem. And, you know, I'm not sure who the best, you know, I know I'm not going to be the one talking because I don't know the parties. I don't know if that's something that we ought to get back and talk. To. I'll talk to Darius and, you know, see if he's got any thoughts about that. And, you know, I don't know what, as far as the town unions, what might be done, but it's certainly worth talking about. So, so Peter, one of the things I would say, I, I would suggest, and, and I, yeah, it's in, is important. If, if we are going to be in this together, then we have to have a conversation conversation together and 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 i think that's what needs to be happening right now i think that the the school administration needs to to to, to talk to the the unions at the same time that we bring representatives from the town either the town administrator or the or the chairman of the of the boards of selectmen select boards in addition i think a school committee member should be on that discussion and put all your heads together and really have a joint, and again, 70% of the budget comes from this, the schools, and 70% of the school budget is labor. And you have to bring, bring all those parties, you got your instructionals, you have the instructional aides, you have the teachers, and, and bring them all, and, and the group from the administration, bring everybody together and put everything on the table to have that discussion. I, I think it's bigger than one per, a one person or a small group solution. You have, you have to reach out to a bunch of people 
and get buy-in from a lot of different areas, not just one area. And I think that's, and you need to start those discussions right now. You, you earlier said something about layoffs and, and notification before May. Well, that, and, and people have to understand, look, we don't want to lay anybody off, but this is what has to be done. But you talk to them, you, everybody's is on the table so that we discuss how that happens. And, and I, it, that, that's, that's the only way you're going to have success is bring the town administrators, bring the unions, bring the board chairs in or somebody from the board to bring the school committee and start that conversation. In my opinion. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I mean, Tom, I agree with what you say, and it's just, you know, I mean, it's, we got to, I mean, uh, you know, we'll get in touch with the administration and see if, if they can, you know, what their thoughts and if they can move forward with something like that. But, and, but I think, you know, you guys, you know, it might be, a, you know, best coming from you guys to try and order some sort of, you know, schedule some sort of joint you know, for town and the schools to talk about, you know, these things too, because that would tend to have more clout. Okay. Scotty? Yeah, we can do that after tomorrow's conversation, Tom. Okay. But but and, but I, I think you need all you need you need representatives from all you need representative from all all area. Not not just not just administration, not just town administration. But you, you, you're talking, you need to talk to all, all groups. All groups have to be part of that discussion. And you, and you never know. You know, I, I had a meeting today. I, I, I had a, I, I was bringing people back to work today. And, and we have to develop these COVID plans. And, and it was the first group back. And I'll tell you what, bringing that, and, and we've had to work in vacuums for the last couple of weeks to try to put these plans together while well, putting the plans out there. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, some of the questions that some of the guys were coming up with were like, yeah, that's a, that's a good example or that those are, and, and it's going to strengthen our plan for moving down the road. And I still think it would when did more people. And I, again, I'm a proponent. Some, sometimes you just have to have a, a very autocratic, autocratic type of, and just to get it done. But other times you need, you need to expand and see what's out there and, and listen to what people have to say. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. So, Jeff, their current guidance is the is the thunderstorm, the black sky exercise, twenty percent reduction in state aid. That's that's where our current discussion is centered on, and we'll move that accordingly. If there is any kind of guidance from either DLS, the governor, or something comes out of the state house. So that's our snapshot in time for today. It looks like if we do this uh, based on the ask and based on those revenue projections. $467,000 gap that's got to be filled. And we got to make sure Elliot and his team gets these as well. Yep. Okay, while we're still talking about uh, revenue and, and budget and budgeting, I'd like to pivot a little and, or excuse me, expand a little and ask if the board wants to update its guidance to uh, people with capital requests. Now, capital comes from a variety of places. Some of it comes through free cash. Some of it comes through appropriation at town meetings. Some of it comes through, and we get about $170,000. Um, make sure that my number's right. About $170,000 we appropriate. I'm sorry, we raise, excuse me, I haven't appropriated it yet. Uh, we have $359,000 in capital requests. Some are straight line, case in point, wastewater treatment that comes straight from wastewater. That's easy. Uh, the schools, both Frontier and uh, elementary, have got a plan. Police has a plan. Um, highway has a plan. Total Fire has a plan. I'm going to sneeze. You have to excuse me about this. Here it comes. I can almost feel it. I want to, and uh, maybe not. Um, uh, but either way, uh, the question is, what do we want to do about capital spending this year? Do we want to freeze capital for the year and only go for uh, emergency repairs, knowing that we can appropriate out of capital stabilization? 
or do you want to continue to develop the capital budget, which is which you know exceeds already what we can what we have to spend. But that's that's part of the course. Some of these are 22, 23, 24 years out. I'm sorry, FY years out, two, three, and four years out. Scott, we have a two hundred thousand dollar approximately budget for capital, right? Yep. So why would we why would we look at spending and that that money can only be used for for capital. So why would we be looking at spending anything more than that two hundred thousand dollars right now? All right, just do a freeze. Fair. So and that would that would put us in what we actually raise versus using a percentage of free cash and et cetera, et cetera. Scott, yeah, I think I, that's fair. I mean you, I think you're use was raised. Free. You're going to be using free cash and stabilization to get through this year, budget-wise. In the our, I mean, the and, and I would just look at the state. The state had about three billion dollars in its rainy day account. I don't know if anybody's looking. It may not be raining, but it, boy, it's sure one hell of a storm out there. And I so I don't see, I don't see how you don't use your stabilization and free cash trying to balance the budget the best you can. And, and so I would say the $200,000 for capital, we figure we look at the 200,000 prioritize, prioritize as the capital planning group to prioritize priority one, two, three, and, and go through the ones and, and get all them accounted for and then do the twos if you can do it. I, I, I think that's what we have to look at doing. David? Yeah, I agree. I mean, we can't really afford to dip into that. We got to kind of use every tool at our disposal because uh, especially with all the unknowns. Jeff, you wanted to pipe in there? Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Chief Dimitropoulos, um, in that is $100,000 for the upgraded radios. And I didn't know if there was any additional information that that might be required. Um, in fiscal year 21. I don't know if you've heard it. I haven't heard anything. So um. I have not heard uh, if it's going to be required. I do know that they were talking about doing the upgrades, to the radios, and that they were going to be notifying the towns as we got closer to it. I know at one point there was some talk about trying to work with FERCOG uh, about doing something with them. Um, but I have not received anything that says that we were one of the towns uh, coming up uh, rather soon. But the last I, the last information that I had heard that they were looking at starting the towns in Franklin County to switch over to the radio. So likely okay. in fiscal year twenty one. Yes. yes. Okay, so we'll send that as, as guidance as a capital planning committee meeting tomorrow. Uh, Jeff, we could pull up the actual appropriation. I'm sorry, I said it again. The actual raise value um, and see what's in capital for spending. And then we'll, that'll, that'll be our, our framework for decision making. Okay, so there's capital guidance. See how easy that was, Peter, when you actually have some control over it? <laughs> So just uh, just to make sure I understood correctly, you're you're limiting the capital uh, budget uh, to the amount that's raised in the tax levy for specifically for capital. Correct. Which is, which is around a hundred thousand. Two. It's two. it's north of that. It's nearly two hundred thousand. Like one eighty. Okay. okay. And, and, uh, and there's any residual money and capital stabilization, you know, inside of there makes sense because that's, that's specifically targeted. Okay. It keeps us out of using free cash or dipping into stabilization or any of that while we, while we protect the core this year. Okay. Um, so that said, can we move to motions? And I say motions, this is annual town meeting motions. We should talk a little bit about that schedule one more time. We're currently targeted for June 5th for the annual town meeting, June 6th for the election. Uh, they are election at the, at the uh, library and annual town meeting. We have to put work with the moderator about what spacing looks like um, based on historic, you know, we could, we probably have enough room to put the amount of people who normally show up at annual town meeting in the gym, but spacing them far and far and far apart. 
but that's a plan that has yet to be developed. Mr. Chair? Yes. So, so I had a conversation with a town clerk today because um, the election's coming up in June, the first Saturday in June. And um, I just want to remind everyone that you can vote absentee ballot, early ballot, and there's going to be very limited, very, very limited hours um, on that Saturday of the vote. So if you do want to vote, um, you can go online. If you have a printer, you can re and you can request a ballot. The the when you do request a ballot, you're asked you're asked to sign. So if you don't have a printer and you want to you want to take advantage of that, you you would you could call the town clerk, uh, town clerk's office. The town clerk uh, can write you um, send you a um, the request you have to sign it and then you have to send it back right now. We don't, there's not a method out there. They don't, um, uh, utilize recognition of electronic signatures yet. So you, you could ask the, the town clerk to send you a paper copy so you can sign the request for the ballot and send it back to her. Um, and, and we, we, we still want people to vote. It's very important. Um, and again, we've had, I mean, voting is uh, the essence of our dem democracy. We want, e even though there's not a lot of, there, there's not a lot of people running a pose on the ballot or and there's no major questions, I would say it, it's still a very important thing to vote at this time. So you can, you can request a town clerk send you that application to, to, to receive a ballot at home so you can vote ahead of time. Thanks, Tom. It's a, we have to remind people consistently. Maybe that is a uh, roadside uh, sign board message as well in a future week. Yep. Right? Okay. So those dates are continuing. Again, we have to, our warrant is signed by the 25th. Last day to mail notice to residents is the 27th. Uh, we have to post by the 29th and uh, we can move on now very briefly. Uh, Jeff, there was a change to the warrant. It was Article 26 gets to come off. Yes, Article 26 gets to come off. Um, that was the, go ahead. No, I, we got confirmation from town council that we do not need, uh, I think I mentioned this last week that uh, the water district doesn't need town meeting approval in order to acquire the property. And we got confirmation uh, from the Kestrel land, land trust that they're um, kindly willing to offer a bridge loan um, until the reimbursement comes through from the state grant. So uh, there's the, the only spending is the uh, related CPA article for, for CPA funds for the purchase of the property. And that's captured in the CPA articles? Yes, it is. Great. So 26 comes off. Any other changes to the actual warrant itself? Uh, no, that was, that was the one. Okay. Is it prerogative of the board to spend a little time looking at the motions? Obviously, we can't do anything with money right now. Um, so that would get us all the way down. Oh, so I'm sorry. There, there was one, one slight change, which was um, that the CPA request for the emergency housing rental assistance. There is a, a figure in the application. It was fifty thousand dollars. That's Article Fifteen. So that would be a change to actually the CPA block of requests. Yes. And do we know how that mechanism is going to work, right? It's done by the Regional Housing Authority. So the question is, who administers it? Do we just give them a $50,000 check and say, you know, here you go? Or what is it? So that I, I get they, they are administering the program um, in, included in your packet. And I think that the discussion mm -hmm. for the CPA committee is, is Wednesday night. Um, okay. They would administer it. Uh, I think of the $50,000, uh, 
um, approximately 35,700 would go directly towards rental assistance. Um, and they estimated that it would serve about 16 people in the community. Um, and I think up to three months worth of rental assistance per, per person. Okay. Tom or David, questions about the program and, and you know what the ask is? I, I just, you know, Scott, I, I, sometimes we don't, and, and there's some very interesting data that we receive. And, and right now, 25.5% of Sundowns, 937 renter households were cost, what they, what they consider cost burdened. And 37.5 of that were severely cost burdened prior to the crisis. So, I, I, I mean, there, there is a, a, a defined um, need, and, and it says due to the speed at which the COVID-19 pandemic started to adverse affect the public, it has been difficult to gauge and gather support of the community in such a, a very short period of time. Um, and again, Scott, I, I think to make, um, we have to, the money that's not you biggest thing is is the housing the housing authority will um they'll be administering it it takes a the 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 uh select board out of it anybody in the town necessarily out of it any money that's not used comes back back to the cpa so i'm looking for a three month uh you know three month period of time so i i i and again we are supposed to have a CPA meeting on the, on the 6th. So we'll discuss it more at that time. But I, I don't see why it wouldn't be on right now, we, we, as long as we answer the questions that we do have. Okay. David? Yep. No, I, I agree. I don't have any questions on um, the way it's structured because I, I looked over the, the numbers and everything. So. And again, remember, see, it's one of the one of the cornerstones of what CPA is for is housing. In this case, right. here, the emergency declaration allows for rental assistance. So, okay. So, with respect to the actual motions, right? We can't really do much until. Uh, article nine. Well, I guess it'd be Article eight, which is CPA monies, is the beginning. Everything else prior to that is general fund transfers, transfer from free to free cash, vote to transfer from free cash into stabilization, the operating budget, the capital budget, salaries. So we go all the way down. We got Jeff, can we talk briefly about Article 7? And maybe we could put this up so people can see it as well. Town is about to transfer blank from blank, which is, you know, there's a pitfall. We can't do that one today, but health insurance account for IRS employee shared responsibility payment. Just a little history there, please. Not that we're going to vote on it, but this is the time that we can talk about it. Yes. Um, sorry. I'm going to pull out my notes and pull it up and try yep. and do both. Um. Do, do, do. So, Tom, in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, as we talk about appropriations, CPA is very targeted. It can only go three, basically three buckets. Um, we know we raise it every year. We know there's some state, we know there are some reserves uh, still left in there. Uh, is there any reason we would have discussion about uh, CPA this year? I, I don't think so, Scott. The, I, the, the hard part with CPA is um, right now we put in, we, we've been, we, with the, the amount that we're, we're putting in, we, we've been getting um, close to 100%, if not 100% back from the state. Right. Um, but that, that is funded through fees that, char that are charged to the registry. Um, if you looked, if you looked in the, um, the, um, section of the paper, real, the real, real estate transactions that hasn't been particularly busy of late, 
Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of real estate going on, so uh, probably those funds are not going to be matched. So next next year, you pr you probably won't see that much money coming back in. But right. we have we have a significant amount of money in in the coffers. Um, so I, I would say we're okay using the CPA money. Okay, so if that's the case, well, Jeff looks up his his uh, history on that. Uh, can we talk about Article Eight? Right, this is a CPA so, article. So, so Mr. Mr. Chair, yep. Can we start at Can we start at Article Two, the salaries? Oh, sure. Yeah. Did you Go want ahead, to do anything, Did you want to do anything with our salaries? Yeah, we can drive them down to zero. Right. What do you think about that? Defer our salaries for the year. I, 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 yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't, none, I don't think any of us do the job. I, I, res, I respect the, um, the town meeting has increased that salary after we've decreased it in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I believe there's going to be one we have to get through next year. Right. Um, next year is going to be almost it is very difficult. Um, and, and again, I, I mean, it's what is it, seventy five hundred dollars total line item, ten thousand out less than ten thousand dollars. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think we have a choice, Mr. Chair. Yep, no, it makes sense. David, you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. So Jeff, let's I take mean, that that motion in Article Two and take our salaries to zero. Okay. Yep. Motion. I heard a motion. Is there a second? Motion's made and second. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So then we jump, and Tom, thanks for picking up on that. Then we jump uh, to three is budget, four is free cash, free cash capital, six capital, seven. seven. Ding, 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 ding. That's where yes. we started, Jeff. Yes. Yeah. So um this is about our unaffordable health care yes that's my understanding that uh last year we got an unexpected bill uh, looks like the amount was um 15,820 um and it was paid from the uh health insurance account mm-hmm um, and this is to reimburse that account. And the number was 15 and change? 15,820. 15,820. Yes. Okay. So we and we need, to, we need to replenish this account. Uh, I think my understanding it was that when it was paid, it was paid out of yes to replenish the health insurance account yep okay discussion with tom or david we had to get a from we need to know where the froms are and that's going to be part of our, our next next couple of weeks discussion but still motion right. okay yeah. there's a move there's a motion is there a second second motions made and seconded to recommend article seven all those in favor all right aye aye, aye. Okay, we get a, and we can go to eight, which is CPA. The first one is a thousand dollars from CPA Open Space Reserve to fund the creation of pollinator gardens, educational signage at the elementary school. And again, this comes from the under the direction of the Sunderland Conservation Commission, but it's a CPA article and a CPA funding source. Discussion. Motion. I heard a motion. Is there a second? Yep. Second. Motions made and seconded to recommend. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is stabilization, CPA Open Space Reserve Conservation Trust acquisition of parcels of land in the town of Sunderland's drinking water protection. This is the catalyst. This is the CPA part that was the Article 26. This is the area around the wellheads out there, the Hubbard, Hubbard Wells. Uh, and again, this is CPA money, uh, part of our open space, and that is going to give us buffer around the, the water, drinking water and participating. The bulk of that money comes from the state, the Drinking Water Protection Plan. 
discussion. Scott, is it the Hubbard's well or is it the Reliki wells? Uh, you're right, Tom. It's Reliki's. My apologies. Yep. Because it, it, it's the ones up on uh, Middle Mountain Road, right? Correct. Yep. 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 I think I those are Reliki wells. Yeah. Yep. Motion. Yeah. Second. Motion's made and seconded to recommend. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Uh, next is open space reserve and CPA undesignated construction of kayak kiosk seating and park storage facility. <clears throat> so uh, if, I, if I could start the discussion. So we have here, these funds are going to be expended with the approval of the select board and under the direction of the, of the library director. I guess I would ask the question, maybe this is something that has been answered already. Does this change uh, any of the operating expenses of the, uh, at the library? And Jeff, I think you and I spoke a couple months ago, and you have to refresh me when this first came up about liability um, in that we're going to have essentially equipment being able to be used. Yes. So um, the library has stated that there's no additional uh, liability for the use of the equipment. Uh, you'd also okay. raise the point about having an additional building and what, mm -hmm. what that, that cost would be. And I believe they are looking into that. Uh, they hadn't had plans for the building when they had the initial conversation with the town's insurer. Got it. Um, so, but yeah, there's, there's a, a waiver and they said, as long as there's the waiver, then right. that there wouldn't be an Take increase in liability. liability. Okay. Discussion on the board. I, I think with our new walkway and the boat ramp that we have out there, Scott, I mean, I've already seen people out in canoes and uh, kayaks and others, so. Yep. Um, little, so a little swift and brown for my liking, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to recommend? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to recommend. Article 10 is written. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three and, zero, and please. I I think just a word on that too. I think they were looking at combining it with some of the existing storage too to, to eliminate the need for a totally separate building for that. So, oh, or cool. structure, Thanks, I should say. Uh, next up, open space reserve. Next phase of Riverside Park design. Uh, this, this is going to be expended under the direction of the town administrator. Jeff, are you ready for this? I'm ready to spend money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly, not exactly the kind of sentiment I want to hear going into this current budget cycle, but I hear you. Spending wisely, that's, what I, that, that's a good one. Yes. Right. Uh, any discussion? If not, is there a motion to recommend? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and second to recommend Article 11 as written. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Uh, Scott, can I just a, pop in for a second? Hey, have, town clerk, how's it going? It's okay. Um, I am having a hard time. I know there are different funds, um, and these funds won't go away, even though we could be cutting the school budget by a lot and the town budget by a lot, but boy, it seems tough to swallow um, moving ahead with a project like that when we're going to be suffering in a lot of different areas in the town. Great point. Optics aren't very it, good, it, are it they? It just seems to me like the, the last project, money came out of the the regular budget, it didn't all come from CPA, you know, insurance increased. There, you know, were a lot of other um, associated costs with that. And I love it, I love it, I think it's great. But I, I don't, I wonder if right now is the time to go further with that. 
Great point. Discussion, uh, board members. Again, optics, not a very, not a very fun optic. And again, it is uh, targeted. It is a raised, it is an existing raised. So it's not like you're going to be impacted this current cycle. I think Tom's point very early on, it was about CPA it was you got it this year. You're not likely going to have it next year. Right. Or not as much of it. You can put it off. I don't know that, um, I mean, other than just from, uh, you know, how it looks really that you're not going to really change much because of the way it's structured financially. Mm -hmm. But. So I guess the question is, you know, again, we have, we have already had a vote and we can, we can revisit that vote. That's easy. Um, Tom, why don't, since it's going to be open for a little while, maybe you could come back after the CPA meeting, CPC meeting, and let us know what the, if there's a, any appetite to withdraw any of these. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. We'll be, talk, we'll be talking about it Wednesday night. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Town Clerk. And um, I, before we move on, can I just add that a couple, a couple of weeks ago, I think there was a, a question raised about the use of CPA funds for balancing the budget and mm -hmm. uh, request right. to go out to the legislators. And I thought this would be a good time to chime in and say that we, I did reach out to, to our legislators. It's not currently allowed um, by the legislation and, and they're not aware of any bills that would allow use of CPA funds for, for general budgeting purposes. Okay. I mean, that's, it, that's important. The way things information is flowing these days out of Boston, it's important to keep in, keep in mind what we can and cannot do. So I appreciate that, Jeff. Thanks very much. Uh, article 12 is on the CPA piece, archeological survey, Riverside park. You want to hold on this and see yeah, it after Wednesday? Yep. Can I, sorry interrupt again but uh, there was another previous question about it wasn't needed previously why is this coming back um, my understanding is that anything that that requires digging um, more than 12 inches or 12 inches or more subsurface requ would require the archaeological dig and the original project was changed not to go um, below a foot uh, more than a foot below the the surface level um, so that's why it was not needed the current plan with the the kayak shed um, the kayak and storage shed combination would require foundations of a foot deep so that's why the archaeological survey is back even though it's not near the riverbank it the whole area is within uh the all oh, the flood plain. district uh, so it, it's not it's not a conservation it's a historical yep. um thing so, yeah. okay so if if a phase two happens then this appropriation is part of this said phase two this is do with kayak. This kayak shed right Correct. All right. I get it now. Hmm. Well, if you're going to have kayaks, the question is, you got to do it, right? And we move to recommend the kayak shed. I guess we can't go halfway. If you're going to have to do it, my feeling is you're going to have to do it. Maybe we'll find a kayak when we do the historical <laughs> art. <laughs> Maybe we'll find something historical that's worth more than the total project and it'll pay for itself. There you go. I still think I, I see parts of the old. I, I I still see parts of the old trolley down there, but there you go. It all depends on which way the water is flowing. Yep. Yep. Uh, then, the, but just then, then the historical commission tells me that there was never a, a bridge with a trolley that went over the. I said, "Boy, it sure looked like train tracks to me." But. Mm -hmm. Uh, discussion, any more on Article 12? If not, is there a motion to recommend? Motion. Uh, second. We can always, we can always, uh, we can always withdraw it at the time. That's right. That's true. Okay. 
Uh, motion has been made and seconded to recommend Article 12 as it's written. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom? I raised my hands, Tom. Oh, I didn't see it. I, I, I'm looking at documents there. Sorry about that. Uh, CPA fund design pedestrian and bicycle pathway system connected to town resources, natural assets. Hmm. Jeff, what do you think of this? Yeah, uh, my understanding was that this had been begun a few years ago um, about bicycle pathway systems mm -hmm. and this was the the continuation of that pro, uh, program. Um, okay, can, can I ask to uh, pass over this until our next meeting? Okay, yep. Article 14, 2000 from CPA reserve, reimburse the town park grant for financing costs. All oh, right, lesson learned. Yep. Mr. Chair, what do you say about this one? Uh, it irritates me, actually. There's no reason we should be going into this because we didn't calculate carrying costs on a bond. It makes no sense. And frankly, again, as I said in other meetings, uh, that we should always have that factored in. But it's frankly, it's frankly, uh, it's, it's it's sloppy for no reason. Just a lesson learned, huh, Mr. Chair? Well, again, if you think about that, you're not gonna you're not gonna go about that process of a short term borrow for construction costs without there being some interest born. And say that there's, you know, it's somebody else's problem that you know, that $2,800 isn't something I thought about means it really wasn't well thought out the first time. So as we move forward, and I've had this conversation with Jeff, as we move forward with any of these, we have to incur what those borrowing costs are. And, you know, as nudgy as he is, the accountant caught this and, and dug his heels in and said, no, someone's going to pay the interest from somewhere. I hope Brian's watching. I, I mean, nudgy in the best way. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to recommend Article 14? Yeah, I'll motion. Exactly. Got to come from somewhere. <laughs> right. Exactly. Why, why, not, it's like... why not be the CPA? <laughs> right. <laughs> Tom, I think I heard a second. I did second, Scott. Any more discussion? If not, no, sir. All those in favor of recommend recommending? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Chair's prerogative, huh? Ch Chair's right. prerogative, exactly. Yep. <laughs> okay, this is the one we were talking about earlier, Jeff, right? With the value of the ask is $50,000, and this is to help with the rental assistance program. And to Tom's read earlier, his comments about, you know, what's, what's considered, you know, very difficult and extremely difficult uh, in rental positions, we're talking only about between 15 and 20, according to the application, uh, that could be eligible here in Sunderland for a three-month period. So it's, it's in many ways very sobering. Any more discussion on including this or recommending? Uh, uh, motion to recommend. Second. Motions made and seconded to recommend. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Scott. Three to zero, please. The next are the normal transfers for CPA. This funds this funds the from the fiscal year to the coming fiscal year. Um, we have twenty one thousand. I'm sorry, FY twenty one estimate revenues. Committee preservation debt service of twenty nine thousand. Revenue administration expenses, which is allowed of 6,000. Uh, revenue estimates for historic preservation expected to raise 30,000. Well, Scott, this is how you, you have to set aside so much money. Yeah, these are our thirds. Yep. So, so we, 
So we look, they look at how much money is being taken in and they have to have designate X amount of dollars or percentage that have to go into the funds so that so someone doesn't spend all the money on historical preservation. It needs to be broken out. So that the next three things that uh, the historical reservation, community housing, open space, mm -hmm. they all have to get a certain percentage every year. And, and that, that's right. That's baked into the statute, and it's right. important to have it in there, like you say, Tom. So it doesn't just funnel toward one particular aspect of what the what the statute was designed to do. And 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 for us on the on the community housing reserves, guys, don't forget when we purchased when we purchased the uh, the Vashinsky House, Sophie's House, the uh, our I think we're paying like twenty four thousand dollars a year, so we're almost covering the. Uh, the housing reserve, the minimum housing reserve by just doing yep. that. It, it, it worked out well for us. Great point, Tom. So again, this sets aside for the FY21 cycle in the appropriate percentages uh, revenues so they can be appropriated the, if they need to be appropriated the following year. They can also accumulate. Okay, uh, any more discussion? No. Uh, motion. Second. Motions made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Read the zero, please. So $273,305. What? We're borrowing for what? Yes, this is what uh, if we want to apply for a park grant. Right. Um, so we need to have we need to have the we need to have the commitment behind us as part of the park application. Is that correct, Jeff? That is correct. So if town meeting doesn't authorize it, the assumption is you go through the chapters, you do the application, you have the park grant ask be equal to or greater than this, and if it is awarded, project goes forward. If it is not, is the town still on the hook for doing it? No. If if we do not get the grant, we are not on the hook. Got it. Uh, discussion. No funds shall be expended. Right. This just that was that was the softball. When I played volleyball yes. when I was young and spelt and handsome, I used to just set up the taller guys to spike. You were what when you were young? <laughs> you know all those things you're supposed to be when you're young. Okay. All right, there's Scott. Uh, discussion about uh, this again. This allows us to apply. This allows us to apply. Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor of recommending Article 17 is submitted. Signify by saying aye. 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 Read the zero, please. And this last one is to adjust our percentages for each of the categories. What's the driver behind this one, Jeff? I am not sure. I have not, I did not hear that discussion at the CPC. Okay. Tom, can you just come back with us next week for this one? Well, it, what I look at it is pro it looks like probably that there, there needed to be a, uh, a correction made. So they have the right amounts in each fund, Scott. Oh, 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 oh. Got it. it you see, yeah, yeah. And, yep. and, and I'll tell you, that, you know, it, it, it's not just Sunderland. It seems like most towns have, you know, you, you need to be a, uh, a Eisenberg School uh, accounting major to understand this stuff sometimes. Right. Okay. With a PhD um, in accounting. Scott, how would you know It sounds exciting. <laughs> yes, it's kind of like lion taming. <laughs> okay. Uh, no more discussion. Is there a motion to recommend Article 18? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor of PhD in accounting and lion taming signify by saying aye. 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 Hi.
either our revolving funds for inspection services, fire inspection, highway shared equipment. Uh, these are authorized or voter revolving funds each of the years. And these values are set forward by the participants, plumbing inspector, wiring inspector, board of health, public library, community room fund, fire inspector, and highway shared equipment values. Any discussion? No. no. Uh, motion. Motion Second. to uh, made and seconded to recommend Article 19. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, three to zero, please. Snow and ice, we should have our numbers from. I, I would suggest we pass over that. We have to pay it, but we need to know from where and what the values are. Uh, bills of prior years, Jeff, we'll look and see what the list is. And raise and appropriate. So this is, That's this right. is for Frontiers Capital, we'll hold off on that. And higher professional services of a study of drainage ditches, Tom? You wanna put this off for you, Scott? No, I think we should actually put it out and get see what we can do about getting uh, budget numbers for that. Even, even if we have, we yep. should at least know what the budget numbers are. Okay. Yeah. Right, so we call we call the time bonds of the world or whoever the, of the world and say, hey, here's here's our goal, here's what we're trying to do, and what's it going to take us to get to the point where we have an NOI and a, and a multi-year working plan that we can bring forward sure. to the town. We can have, we can ask Jeff to do that in the spare time <laughs> from an undisclosed <laughs> location, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff, just remember to be successful. You only have to work a half a day. Your choice: the night half or the day half. That's right. Okay, uh, we need for Article 24, it's a zoning amendment, the annual town meeting. I remember this. This is cleaning up part of just cleaning last up. Year's. Yeah. Yep. Uh, move to recommend. Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to recommend. Uh, Article 24 is written. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Three to zero, do please. We need, do we need to go back and recommend 23 or? Uh, I think it'd be nice to have a value there. Just okay. get a number, David. Yeah, okay, good. 26 is passed over because we just outed it. 27 through 32 consent. are the consent. Is there a motion to approve the consent? I'm sorry, recommend the consent articles. Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. And it's important to bear in mind these consent articles, we, we've been doing it too long. I mean, anybody who reads them goes, wait a minute, it allows, allows us to have multi-year contracts? It lets, it lets a treasurer actually borrow money? You know, it, it, it lets us under chapter 44A authorize to enter into intermunicipal agreements. We, we take that for granted like it's business as usual, but we vote on those every single year. Uh, sorry, I, I was still grappling with Tom's joke. I hope. Um, <laughs> did you skip Article Twenty Five, or was there was there a vote on that? Article Twenty Five. Uh, we're. I need to see a number from okay. Rich. Yep. Yes. Okay. Again, this would come from sewer reserves, and that, so it's linear, but. We want to see where his priorities, which of the next branches or mains were his priority and get that imaging done so we could continue to programmatically spend money in that area on that, excuse me, on that system. Thank you. No, I appreciate you checking that. Okay. Motions, annual meeting warrant articles were good. Any board updates? Tom, you said you got CPC on Wednesday? Yes, sir. David, anything? Uh, no, no updates. Okay, so we have a capital planning committee Zoom thing tomorrow. Um, 
and there is a conversation amongst, um, there's gonna be a conversation amongst some members of the four towns, excuse me, boards of the four towns tomorrow uh, as well. Um, that's gonna be prior to capital planning. Jeff, you have anything you wanna add? Yes. Um... Uh, first, I think that we had received a letter from Senator Comerford and uh, Representative Blay about requesting grant deadline extensions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just want to mention that. And I think that just before this started, we, we did get notice that at least EEA grants were going to be extended. Um, oh, nice. So I wanted to mention that um, we, in the town office buildings, um, had the heat pumps installed, um, and I believe that they are working. Um, so no more air conditioner units in the windows. It's nice. Um, we on Thursday had a department heads meeting and we talked about the budget and, and where we sort of stood and I went over the revenue estimates. Um, and we also started talking about if the governor's plan to open up uh, or end the stay at home order on the 18th is gonna happen. Um, how are we gonna approach allowing members of the public in, into town buildings, um, how do we maintain the six foot distancing and, and starting to plan for that. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to just touch on was the North Main Street reconstruction project. Um, letters uh, went out to property owners a couple weeks ago, informing them of their uh, right to appraisal and just compensation for the easements that are required as part of that project. So we've been getting a lot of questions about how that's working. Um, I want to be clear on the timeline. Uh, the project will be advertised um, in late summer and go out to bid this fall. Construction is not uh, expected to happen until the next construction season. Um, I think there are a lot of people thinking that this is going to move a lot quicker than it is. Um, so one of the next steps for the town is to actually hire an appraiser and a review appraiser to get that done. Um, and MassDOT was encouraging us to do that quickly. So I was going to ask, uh, and this was from a conversation earlier today, um, they, they advised that if, if the select board wanted to uh, take a vote to authorize that. Um, I, I did a little initial research. I think it's gonna be, and my procurement training coming in to help, um, <laughs> it's gonna be under $50,000. So we were in the solicitation of written quotations. Um, so I, as long as you're okay with, with me moving forward with that, uh, going out and trying to get that information, I think we're trying to get the appraisals done by the third week in June is the goal. And where's the funding source? I am looking into that. My understanding from MassDOT is that we can use chapter 90. So I'm checking to make sure that we have funds in chapter 90 to use for that. Um, okay. Okay. So, so, Mr. Chair, please. Can Jeff? Can we? Um, can we ask George? Because uh, street sweeping is supposed to be ongoing this week. But can we ask the uh, the, the highway super to uh, inventory the uh, culverts that we have in town, and and state their and and on that spreadsheet state their their condition and if they need to be cleaned and or maintained. I, I think that's one thing we should have, right, David, for our uh, ditch study? Yes, we definitely need that. And it's something we should just have anyway. I was kind I, of surprised we didn't have it. So can, can we ask them to inventory that, Jeff, and, 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 and give us a ranking one through, one through five on its condition 
and if it needs service and if the water's flowing, you, you know, all that good culvert stuff. Yeah, and he should tag them with the GPS location too, so then we can add that to a layer if we need to down the road. But but I mean, if if, if we're gonna start, if we have anything coming with Time Bond or or you know Samson Weston or or any of those CHA whomever, we would need that information. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I can certainly do that. And on on the point about um the street sweeping that was uh actually postponed a couple weeks i think um i spoke to the highway super and it's going to be i think the week of may 18th is when he's postponing it to oh good so he did so. he do the culverts before then here you go do they need to go back and re-sweep onto the area? Because I know they had gone along and swept over, but by the time they get back to it, it looks like a lot of that's just going to be washed away again. Absolutely, Davey. You're right. So, and um, I know that we had had a little bit of a discussion on the Memorial Day parade, and I'm just trying to get the recreation director on if we, we wanted to talk that through excellent but that, that was the the last thing i had and i'm just i don't know is there anything else um maybe, maybe we could do the appointment the cultural council sure we could do that so we got a correspondence I'm requesting Barbara Morell be Morell be uh, request from Barbara Morell to be on the Cultural Council. So, welcome to make a recommendation if we wanted to have it as an appointment. Anybody who wants to volunteer for that wonderful stuff is completely fine by me. How about you guys? Yeah. Motion. Uh, second. Motion's made and seconded to appoint. Barbara Murrell to the Cultural Council. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And thanks for volunteering. Okay. Public. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Public comment? Yes, Scott, I got a couple things. Hey, Peter. Um, just in the stuff you were going through, the motions, uh, just to toss out, number one, I totally agree with Wendy. The, I mean, it's pretty close to 100000 for the kayak operation. And... Right. I realize the funds are coming from a source that can only be used for certain things, but boy, it just seems awful rich. Yeah, optic. I mean, it, yeah, it just, I mean, it would be awful rich. To me, it'd be awful rich in any year, um, mm -hmm. but this time particularly. So anyway, just add Great my point. voice to Wendy's. Um, secondly, I, appreciate. Uh, I think that uh, maybe Jeff said that uh, he checked with... Uh, at the state level as to whether uh, CPC money could, or CPA money could be used for any other things. And the answer was there was nothing in the works. Um, but I think the discussion last week also included looking at were there any parts of any of the various budgets that go into the town budget that could legitimately under current rules be covered by some CPA money. And I, I just wanted to hope that that was process was going to uh, go on because you never know you might be able to find some things that you could make a case for doing that and It's great to pay out probing the definitions you know where it can be used I think is is an ongoing thing that we have to we have to stay on top of right I mean it may be there there may be possibilities there may not but there may be possibilities there um, to cover some things that are basically existing town expenses yep. at least for this you know one year um because I looked up the, the most recent figure I could find in town reports was like, you know, the end of FY uh, 18, and it said we had something like 400,000 of unallocated CPA money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not hurting. Um, even with that, I still wouldn't spend 100K on a kayak operation. Um, and anyway, my third point was, on Article 17, where you talk about spending 200 and some thousand uh, or authorizing it 
in anticipation of getting a grant to show that the town wouldn't actually have to spend that money. Uh, my quick reading of it while it was on the screen indicated that uh, we would not have to, we would not be on the hook for spending the money if we didn't get the grant. But it read to me like if we got a grant of some amount, some lesser amount, then the authorization to spend the full amount was, you know, was in place. And I would think it would be written so that the authorization was in place to spend, you know, up to the amount of whatever grant we did get. It's good. Point. So you're looking for it to be proportional? No, just something. I mean, if we get, if we're asking to spend 270,000, uh, you know, expecting to be covered by a grant and we get a grant for 20,000, according to the way I read it, that authorizes us to go ahead and authorizes you guys to go ahead and approve spending the 270,000. But I don't think that's the intent. And if it's not the intent, then it ought to be in the writing. So I, I think some details about the grant might be helpful. It, it's a reimbursable grant, I think up to 60 or 70% of the, of the project costs. And part of the reason for um, the interest in applying for the CPA grant, uh, excuse me, for the park grant is because we have significant uh, investments in the park in the CPA fund. So we're basically leveraging those funds and the, they would be the town portion of the spend and then the state would would reimburse uh, for the rest of it. So right, but I just, it says, th there's some language in there that talks about um, under what condition, you know, what's, what's required for us to go ahead and do this and it was required to get, you know, certain grant money from the state that that has to be approved first and I just want to make sure that, you know, if there's, if they prove some money, but it's far short of what we were expecting, you know, are we then going forward anyway? To, to your point, Peter, I see that, I see where there is a discrepancy in that language. And you're right. Say so we get 50,000 from the state, you know, are we on the hook for another 175? Are we? Yeah, I mean, I'd just rather ask now and have the language, if it needs to be cleaned up, cleaned up before town meeting yep. rather than asking then. Yep. Jeff, could you follow up with council on that? Yep. And just a Great. point Thanks. of clarification on article 10 to that money is actually not just, it's not just for the kayak. That's actually for the, all the park storage facilities. So just, I just want to be clear about that. And it includes benches and a few other things. So it's not like it's, you know, 70, $80,000 just for kayak stuff. Cause I can go rent a kayak for a whole long lot of days and you can. Time. And that, that, that's, that's specifically why I want to make that point because that, that actually covers all of the park storage facilities, including the existing building that's down there now okay. into, into one. So I just want to make that, you know, just, just to be clear about what we're talking about in that. Okay, thanks. Because yeah, it, you, you can buy a lot of kayaks for $76,000. So point. Anything else, Peter? Nope, that's all. Thank you. Any other public comment? If not, we'll pivot over and talk about Memorial Day. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, Jim, Jim is on if you want to talk to him. I'm here. Where was that? I was, I was just, just going there. Memorial Day. Tom, uh, you had raised a question a couple weeks ago about Memorial Day contingencies. Jim, in your spare time, Hey, how have you been? You look good. Okay. I've been fine. I hope everyone else is good. too. <clears throat> Me too. So Memorial Day Parade, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a uh, tradition here in Sunderland. And um, the likelihood of us being able to gather that closely this year is at best murky and at most likely not going to happen. That would be about right until we know what happens on the 18th. But that's only three days mm -hmm. off from the, the date. So I don't, uh, Jeff and I have had some conversations. I have contacted the VFW Post and Waitley. They were not planning to do anything because they're all up there in age and they do not want to uh, have that many of them together. Um, they are, however, willing to send three people to Sunderland on, Mon on that f Friday night, the 22nd, then they will send three different people to Waitley on Sunday and three different people to Deerfield on 
Monday, and that's all they can commit to. I've talked to uh, Lenny Bledja, um, who is the person in town that usually gathers to three or four of the vets in town, and he's willing to uh, do a small ceremony um, if we decide to do something that day. Um, I've also called LaSalle Flores to find out what the drop dead date is to order wreaths and carnations if we want to place wreaths and or do the, uh, the brief ceremony in memory of the veterans that uh, have died from Sunderland as we have done. Uh, and I'm also working on a, on a bugler for TAPS if in fact we wanted to have a small gathering that day. And then Jeff said that there might be some other ideas that uh, some of you have. So that, I think that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, so Jim. Yeah. Um, I, I would definitely 100% hold the uh, ceremony, the honoring of the, the members from Sunderland that passed at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, that I, I would say that is a, a number number to me, we have to do. I would, I would also, um, so we could limit the number of people in that area. Yeah. I, I would, I would think we can work with the chief of police and the fire department. And many, many, many years ago before, it seems like you've been doing it for ages, but when Peggy, Vileko, but when Peggy Vileko, um, did it, we there was a few very very thin years, and they had the uh, police cruiser and fire truck just route, roll down South Main Street, and they played patriotic marching music out of the uh, the, the vehicle, and and I I think we could probably arrange that to happen. We could probably get the, an ambulance and um, the the cruiser and a fire truck to to go down. And and then we just have the small ceremony down at uh, uh, the cemetery, and we could have that zoomed um, by FCAT. Jim, right. it, you got you guys have just, it's, it's just a beautiful ceremony, um, and and I mean you, you could extend a, a uh, an invitation to Natalie and and Joe Comerford, either you know either or both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have I have them on my list if that's what we decide to do. I and again I, I would I would say we we practice social distancing. I, you know we had talked about having a parade down to the cemetery. Scott Bergeron and the other cemetery trustees would probably not like uh, fire trucks trying to turn around in the cemetery. Well, we've um, had no. some problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so, so, but I, but I think if we could just um, bring a few people down, um, zoom the, zoom the service. Um, I, I, I and, and, and again, it's Memorial Day. It's not a Fourth of July parade to begin with, right? Um, and, and I, and I think it's a day of remembrance of those that that paid the ultimate sacrifice that came, you know, that didn't come back, and and some of them did come back, paid very dearly also. So right. My, well, I, my, my thought could, would be if we yeah. did that, that that would be a brief, it would be a briefer ceremony. We would just probably do the replacing of a wreath, the lowering of the flag to half mast. Um, I, I can do a prayer since uh, I can serve as the minister. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, we'll have a moment of silence for any Sunderland um, veterans who passed away during the last year. Wendy will get me a list as she always does. Um, and then we can honor the 19 uh, Sunderland residents that died uh, during the various wars. And um, they will do a, a gun salute. The VFW Post would do a gun salute. And if I have someone to play taps, we could play taps. And that would be basically it. I like that. And my only other thought was if you wanted any type of community involvement, we might ask. And this is strictly me, but uh, uh, a scout leader and a, and a boy scout or a cub, uh, a cub scout, maybe a girl scout leader and a girl scout, maybe a baseball coach and a player and a softball coach and a player, and that would be it. And selectmen and yeah. veterans. 
I, I, I would say that would be all based on what the governor says for right. a number. If they, if they limit to the 10, the gathering of 10, we right. probably can't. But if they make it 25, maybe it's something we could do. Well, I'm just looking at if, yep. in fact, he does go to that, I could have a contingency plan in place that those people would know yep. if it goes to 25, 20 or 25, we're going to have you come down. If it doesn't, they're I'm off, like, the, hook. They're off and, the hook. And we, and we can social distance at the cemetery right. pretty well. Right. So, okay. Good idea. Yeah. I like that, Jim. Good job. My understanding is that if it's an outdoor activity and you can maintain social distancing, there isn't a limit to 10 people that can gather. Uh, is that your understanding as well, Chief? Do you, did, I heard that on a call today, that, that if it's outdoors and you're six feet apart, you can have larger gatherings. I, 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 I can confirm that and get back. I'd have to look at a governor's order again, just to okay. clear. We can do that. Oh, and I, I guess I guess my other piece of this I, I forgot was, I, I think that if we had the, uh, we'll have probably a couple veterans from town. We'll have the three from the VFW post, myself, the select board, um, maybe one representative from the police department, one from the fire department. Um, and then if we can have those other people, um, yeah. but that's. We'll see what the numbers are, Jim. Okay. I'll, I'll make some Good. contingency phone calls just to alert some people that we might um, have something more than a small ceremony. And if so, we would like to have them be there so they have a heads up and we will let them know once we hear from what the governor says and what we decide and um, the other stuff I'll get in place. Great. Great. Thanks for your help, Jim. Jim, okay. if you need any, oh, Jim, if you need any help getting somebody playing uh, trumpet, let me know. Uh, well, I've got a couple kids who graduated from Frontier the last two years who actually played. Um, if I can get one of them, I think that would be good because we don't have access to the band. But if not, I'll take you up on that, Eric. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks again, Jim. And we'll stay in touch over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. You, be well, okay. everybody. You too. Uh, housing Choice Community Application to Sign. Is it in the folder, Jeff? Uh, yes, it was in the folder. Okay. Motion to assign? Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two to zero, please. And then lastly, we have Building Commissioner, Kamish. So Jeff, you were in contact with town administrator, uh, David and Hadley about uh, the opportunity for uh, some kind of joint service uh, meeting over the next week. That is the goal. Uh, I think next week he, he was available. Um, okay. So trying to sit down with him. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you can keep, keep me in the loop with that and I can participate. Okay. Wonderful. Great. Okay, the discussion. So our next meeting is Monday, May 11th at 6.30, right back here. And again, remember, if you wanna vote without having, you can, you can mail the town clerk and get an absentee ballot, and that will help speed the election along. And uh, remember that uh, we're still targeting June uh, 5 for annual town meeting and June 6 for uh, annual election. Any other comments? If not, Jeff, you've got another eight hours worth of work to do tonight. You'll be all set. Yep. <laughs> well Went played. Straight in. There you go. Went straight in. Okay. Not hearing any more discussion. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.